live from the APAC Policy Conference in Washington, D.C., this is APAC TV. The 2020 Policy Conference is getting underway this evening with the season three premiere of the TV drama Fauda. Thanks to the popularity of services like Amazon and Netflix, audiences have turned Israeli television exports Fauda and Shdiesel into global hits. Joining us now is the woman responsible for these programs, Donna Stern, the managing, the managing director? I was gonna say managing editor, managing director of Yes Studios. It's a phenomenon. How would you describe Fauda and to somebody who doesn't know? Well, Fauda is a great action thriller, very grounded, um, based on reality, real life experiences of undercover Israeli soldiers brought to life in television. So obviously the action is heightened and the drama is heightened, but it really is an excellent thriller. You know, I am not unbiased when it comes to, I, I love these shows. I mean, really, people need to stream them and see, really, you have to because they're very different, the shows are very different, but they're very compelling in their own individual ways. Um, so were you expecting blowback? Because with Fauda in particular, you give complexity to the characters, both the um, Israeli, which you would expect, and the Palestinians. So it's not just black and white characters, you know, shooting it out. So were you expecting some blowback? Well, initially when we launched the show back in 2015, that was season one in Israel, it didn't hit Netflix till 2016. Um, we thought we'd get blowback from both sides, from the right, from the left, from Arabs and Palestinians and obviously um, Jews, and none of that happened. Um, I think that's our biggest surprise, that people just embrace the show for trying to be balanced and fair and give another look at the conflict. And people have loved the show and shown it nothing but love. And it's been, you know, five years. Um, yeah, and, everyone, and everyone's <laughs> talking about when is the next one? Because you don't have, unlike American television, you are free from so many constraints. You don't have to do a pilot. You don't have to say, oh my goodness, we have, Season, the next season is starting in eight months. We should rush two seasons. You take your time. Well, that could be a good thing or a bad thing. I mean, if you're holding out and you're really waiting and wanting to see you're, Well, you're series, getting the, hu the hungry audiences. <laughs> we are getting hungry audiences. Um, there, there's going to be two years in between um, season two and season three, which is premiering you know, tonight here, international premiere, first uh -huh. screening we've ever had outside of Israel for this season. Here, um, Shtisel, on the other hand, that's going to be an even longer wait. I mean, we're getting ready to shoot season three this spring, and by the time... And, and there's Shtisel on the screen. You know, the two shows couldn't be more different, but what they share is the character, character, character. Even though, you know, none of us have been undercover, well, some of us, obviously, in Israel. <laughs> It's, a, it's about the relationships between the people in the unit, the, the families. And in Stiesel, it's the relationship between the father and son, the son and his love interests. The, 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 I mean, it, that's whatever you can just identify with. Well, one of the things I think we do really well in Israel is um, develop characters. And that's always how our stories start. So when we met with writers and producers, they always tell us about a character in their world versus the other way around. So it's never about the outside setting, it's always about the inner workings of that person that they want to explore. Unlike American television, think about it, you usually get somebody describing a show saying, oh, it's set in a hospital, it's set in a courtroom, it's set in a law office, it's set in a police station. That just described all of American television. <laughs> Most of them. <laughs> in, a, right, in a teacup, right. Most of them network American right. television. Uh -huh. And ours are usually about, you know, there's a guy, there's a woman, there's a family, there's a, there's a unit, there's a love. That's how our stories start. And I think you really get a sense, a good sense of that with both those examples. And you get a real sense of life within the ultra-Orthodox uh, community. Yes, and that is surprising because even in Israel, um, you know, there's this curiosity about how ultra-Orthodox people live. I mean, I live in Tel Aviv. That's a stone throw away from Neblak. I could literally be there in 15 minutes, but I know nothing about the ultra-Orthodox world. So it's just an interesting, just and compelling, such an unveiling of the intricacies of what it's like to be ultra-Orthodox. Same for us as it is for an international global audience, which is kind of surprising. Right. Well, right, you get a, that's the beauty of it. The, you get a glimpse into the life of the ultra-Orthodox and all the different regulations and things. But as far as relationships, family relationships, 
those aren't so different than any no, family. actually, they're very universal. And I think yeah. that's what helped the show reach a global audience. Um, and I think it's always surprising to see, no matter you know, how strict and um, how construed somebody's life is, you know, love and family and the bonds that people share are the same. So if there is a formula, it's shooting on a low budget, a lot of first time writers, and showing I wouldn't necessarily recommend all that because it's I would really, love to have more money. It's right because if you talked about first time writers, low, you know, low budget, uh, different segments of life in Israel, that sounds terrible. But what's coming out are gems. Yeah. So it's not a formula you created. It just well, happened organically. Well, it's part of um, the way we're set up. Um, Israeli television industry in general is very much regulated, unlike the U.S. where none of that is. So we, even as a private company, have to invest back our earnings into original production. And obviously you want to make as many shows as you can with that budget. So we can give more people a chance because we know we are going to be spending that money. And then once we do, we have to be as creative as we can about how we spend it. So we do try to, you know, shoot on location, um, shoot current day, not have a lot of effects, not have too much going on other than great dialogue, great characters, and just a wonderful narrative. Well, speaking of things that are, are different, I, the show on the spectrum, kids, 20-somethings, living in Israel on the autism spectrum and what they face, their relationship with on screen now, their relationship with each other and the world at large. That is a pitch I think would fall flat most of the time here. But what made you decide that that's, oh, that's a show that we're going to pick up? <laughs> this is actually a great story. Uh, Donna Hadithi, who created this, um, she herself is a sister to um, now her brother, Guy, I believe is 19. But when we first met, she pitched us a documentary about him. And it was him learning to read so he could um, read from the Haftarah once he got to be 13. It, it took him till he was 15 to actually get there, but she documented those years of him together. It was a beautiful piece. We did a documentary, and that's how that relationship started. And when, after that little movie went on to win quite a few awards, we said to her, well, what else would you like to do? And we tend to do that a lot with people that we enjoy working with. What else are you interested in exploring? And she said, well, you know, I'm kind of worried what will happen to Guy when he grows up. Right now, it's fine, you know, mom and dad, he lives with them, they take care of him, but what's gonna happen to him in a few years? And from that came on the spectrum, and that's a study of adults on the autistic spectrum. Uh, not savants, not great musicians, not right. geniuses, just people who want to be loved and... So it's not jazzed up, it is the reality that they face. Right, the reality. The good, the bad, the ugly, the triumphs, um, you know, the sadness, the hardships that come with that. And it's just um, from the point of view of people who are just nearing 30, they're sharing an apartment, they're trying to find love and employment and just kind of um, find their way in the world. And this, that show is being adapted for American television, yes, is. which is many, pretty extraordinary. Many of our shows have. Um, well, a lot yeah. of shows, right, that people, they've been adapted all over the place. You have, so Not did Fauda and Cecil, did that open the doors that you have people, you have different outlets coming to you and we have um, well it, it's been a process I think if we go back to how Israeli television kind of found its way into mainstream you know global streamers and adaptations here in the US I mean we can go back to in treatment 15 like, years ago just fantastic which is uh, homeland fantastic. homeland right after that again both adaptations and then I would kind of put Fauda on that map right afterwards as a show that wasn't adapted it was the original Hebrew Arabic show but Fauda certainly opened up a lot of doors for our particular business and for other you know, uh, producers working internationally as well. We have a show called Your Honor, which is actually today, I believe, this weekend is the, um, the final shoot days. Uh, that's being shot right now in New Orleans with Brian Cranston starring. Great, for right. Showtime, that's pretty like, awesome. I would say that you are in the big time and, if, and we're out of time, but keep coming, keep Keep them coming. We're <laughs> Keep watching. We, we will. Really, you have to watch the Stiesel and Fauda and anything that's coming down the pike from this woman. 
Thanks so much for being with us. That's all for now. Join us again tomorrow morning as we look ahead to the first general session of the 2020 APAC Policy Conference. It will include a special program with concentration camp liberators and survivors, and also speeches from Benjamin Netanyahu and Benny Gantz. To continue the conversation now, check out social media, hashtag APAC2020. You can also unlock exclusive content, such as on-demand videos and special breakout sessions by registering for the online conference. I'm Victoria Corderi, and for all of us here at APAC TV, good night.